Hey, welcome back everybody. So today we want to compute the surface area of a sphere and a torus. So I just want to remind you of the surface area formulas for doing this. In the first two cases, we have some continuous curve, y equals f of x, and of course that's continuous on AB. And these are the formulas for the various spinning situations you've come across. And in three and four, we have some curve that's represented parametrically. And here are the corresponding surface area formulas based on the different rotations. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and find the surface area of a sphere. So notice we have very little information here. So we have to, we have to cook up quite a bit. So I think the idea, if we want the surface area of a sphere, is to start with a circle. So we want that circle to have radius r. OK, so here's my circle with radius r. And maybe to make a sphere, we, we don't need the whole thing. Maybe let's just consider half of it. So let's just take this half. So yeah, let's take the, the top half. OK, so yeah, let's take the top half and let's spin it around the x-axis. Okay, so that's going to sort of generate my sphere. Sort of imagine that. Okay, etc. So that would that would make my sphere, and I want the surface area of that sphere. So let's think about this. So surface area is equal to two pi times the integral from a to b of r times the square root of 1 plus dy dx quantity squared dx. Well, if we want to talk about dy dx, we need some sort of name for this. So let's think about this as a circle centered at the origin with radius big R. And we can just solve for y. That'll give us the top half. OK, so that seems good. And let's see here. So we need to figure out what do they mean by little r? Well, that's sort of the spinning radius. So little r is not this. So little r is this sort of spinning radius. So that would be this distance right here. That would be little r. Well, that would be the y value. And the y value is exactly this. So that seems pretty good. So we want to calculate this. Okay, so this is our spinning radius little r, right? So it's, if you think about it, just upper minus lower, this y value, which is this, minus this y value, which is zero. And then I need one plus the derivative squared. Well, if I need the derivative, it might be a good idea to rewrite this and look out for chain rule. Okay, so the derivative would be 1 half quantity r squared minus x squared to the minus 1 half times by the chain rule minus 2x. There's my derivative squared. Okay, so that seems pretty good so far. It looks like the twos will cancel. And then we can rewrite this. So that seems pretty promising so far. Let's see what we have. Okay, so we've got our 2 pi. We've got the integral from minus r to r. 
we still have this radical right here, which is just fine. And then here I've got one plus, let's see here. So I still have minus X over the square root of big R squared minus X squared. So that's all squared dx. So just rewrote this algebraically. OK, so let's go ahead and square this. So there's no need for absolute values down here because of this interval. So we're fine to just call that r squared minus x squared downstairs. OK, so that becomes that. We can go ahead and get common denominators right here. OK, so yeah, getting common denominators. Let's see what happens. So one, I can rewrite one as r squared minus x squared over itself. That seems pretty nice. And take a look at that x squared, that minus x squared in the numerator. That seems really nice. OK, so those seem to cancel. So I've got a square root with r squared over r squared minus x squared. And I can deal with this in a couple ways. I can realize that these are both square roots, so I can multiply their insides. Or I can split this up, right? If I take the square root of a fraction, it's the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. And you can see how nice that is with this. OK, so these will cancel. And you have to remember that r is constant in respect to x. We're integrating in respect to x. Now, you could have used the fact that there was y-axis symmetry to write your integral as 2 times the integral from 0 to r. And that would have been just fine. I'm going to choose not to, but it's fine if you do. OK, so the antiderivative of this constant r in respect to x, that should be r times x. We're integrating from x, let me write this for emphasis, from x equals minus r to x equals r. OK, so we're just going to carry out the fundamental theorem. So it's going to give us r times r minus r times minus r. And so this is r squared plus r squared. So that's going to be 2r squared for a total of 4 pi r squared. So there's the surface area of a sphere with radius big R. So that's pretty cool. So if you've seen that formula before, this was a neat way to compute it by hand. OK, so we just found the surface area of a sphere. Next, what we want to do is find the surface area of a donut or a torus. So yeah, if, if I have some donut or torus, what would be its surface area? So we're going to take sort of a little bit of an inspiration from the sphere problem. 
starting with a circle and then spinning the circle. We just want to pick a circle that helps us generate a donut or a torus. Okay, so that's the big question. So what is the surface area of a torus? So you can sort of imagine how to generate such a thing, right? You start with some circle and then you spin it around and that generates your donut or your torus. Okay, so let's start with a generating circle. Maybe we've got some circle like this and let's say maybe the X value here is A and maybe the radius here is R. And so if I spin this, you can imagine, hopefully, that I'm going to generate some sort of donut or torus. Now, if I could draw, you know how my drawing skills are. If I could draw, that would look a little bit more like, like this, right? That would be our torus. OK, so yeah, start with a, some circle, spin it around to generate the torus. Okay, so let's see, what, what do we have here? So we want the following. Okay, so we wanna choose A and R such that this happens so that I don't intersect here and I get a nice hole in the middle. And so what would be the equation of such a circle? Well, the circle, we'd have X minus A because it's translated, that quantity squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. OK, so maybe this would be a little bit easier to solve using parametric equations. And so we chose to, it looks like, rotate around y. So let's give the surface area formula that um, calculates surface area when your curve is defined parametrically. So we'll, we'll describe this parametrically in just a moment. Okay, so we have got a uh, translated circle here. So we want X is equal to A plus Looks like r cosine of t, y is equal to r sine of t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. You can convince yourself this is fine. So it's fine for a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, if I plug this in for x and this in for y, I'll get a Pythagorean identity on the left, and I'll have r squared equals r squared. So that would be true. Um, secondly, well, does this describe our circle? Well, it does, because t, if t is 0, I start here. And then as t goes through the interval, 0 to 2 pi, by the time I make it back to 2 pi, I've generated the full circle. So this works. Now, since we're rotating around y, That means that R will be equal to X of T. <coughs> okay, that's not bad. So we have all the bits and pieces. So this is two pi. We have the integral from zero to two pi. We have R, which we said was X of T, right? So R is X of T because we're spinning around Y. So that'll be a 
plus r cosine of t. And it looks like we just need some derivatives. So I need dx dt. So that should be negative r sine of t. So I took the derivative here in respect to t squared. So that takes care of this. And now I want dy dt squared. So that'll be r cosine of t squared dt. So I think this is going to be pretty nice because it looks like we're headed towards a Pythagorean identity. So we want to be on the lookout for that. So we're going to have an r squared here and an r squared here. I can factor that out. And I'll have a sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t, which we know is 1 dt. So this will just become r. And let's tidy that up a little bit. So it looks like we have, what do we have here? I could factor that out in front if I wanted to. That would actually be just fine. In fact, why not? Let's call that 2 pi r. So r is constant in respect to t, so I could factor that out in front of the integral. And so I have a plus r cosine of t dt. And that's not a bad computation to do. So antiderivative of a is a t. And this is the antiderivative of cosine of t. I know that looks like a theta, but it's actually a t. So that'll be r sine of t from 0 to 2 pi. So that looks like, so a times 2 pi plus r sine of 2 pi minus, it looks like 0 plus 0, sine of 0, 0. But we know sine of 2 pi is 0, so this term will vanish. These will both vanish. And I'm just left with this product here. So it looks like the surface area of a torus is 4 pi squared, oops, squared, um, a times r. So maybe a little bit neater. How cool is that?